Exercise 5 says the standard medium moving box from the Home Depot has dimensions 22 inches by 16 inches by 15 inches. What is the volume of this box in cubic inches? So volume is equal to the length times the width times the height. So we have 22 times 16 times 15. So if we multiply those, we get 22 times 16 times 15. We get 5,280 cubic inches. So that is our volume for exercise 5. A soup can is pictured below. It has a diameter of 7 centimeters. If the volume of the cylindrical can is 120 centimeters cubed, find the height of the can. So first, let's talk about the volume of a cylinder. It is pi r squared h. And if the diameter is equal to 7 centimeters, then that means that the radius is equal to 3.5 centimeters. So we know the volume is 120, and we know that the radius is 3.5, and then we want to square that, and we don't know our value for h. So what we want to do is we want to divide both sides by 3.5 squared times pi, so h ends up equaling 120 over pi times 3.5 squared. And if we simplify that, divided by pi times 3.5 squared, we get 3.12. centimeters. So that is the height of the can. Find the area of this triangle below in square inches by measuring the triangle to find the dimensions needed. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it up to you to measure this using a ruler, but keep in mind that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So you will need to measure this length here as well as that length there, and that will help you find the area of this triangle. So below we have some examples of solving some equations. Most of them are linear. Uh, number five is not linear. Let's go ahead and jump into solving. So for this first one, we want to add x on both sides. That will give us 4x minus 4 is equal to 12. Then I want to add 4 on both sides. And if I do that, I get 4x is equal to 16. Then I want to divide both sides by 4, and we get x equals 4. In number 2, I want to solve for L, given the perimeter is 40, we don't know what L is, and we know that the width is 4. So 40 equals 2L plus 8. Now I can subtract 8 on both sides, and that will give me 32 equals 2L. And then if I divide both sides by 2, I end up getting L is equal to 16 meters. So that is the answer for number two. Number three wants us to solve for the radius if we are given the area is 35 inches squared. So we have 35 equals pi r squared. I'm going to divide both sides by pi. So I get r squared is equal to 35 divided by pi. Now I can take the square root of both sides, and that gives us r is equal to the square root of 35 over pi.
And if we want a decimal approximation, I can go ahead and throw that into my calculator. So our radius value is about 3.34 inches. In number four, the first thing that we want to do is distribute the three. So we'll get 3x plus 15 is equal to 4x minus 18. And I like dealing with positive numbers, so I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. And that will give us 15 is equal to x minus 18. And then from here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy it over here. And then from there, if I add 18 to both sides, you end up getting x is equal to 15 plus 18 is 33. And that is our answer there. So let's say we wanted to check our answer and make sure it's correct. We could plug back 33 into our original equation and verify that both sides of the equation will be true. So let's plug it into the left-hand side. If we do that, we get 3 times 33 plus 5, which equals 3 times 38, which equals 114. Now the right-hand side, we get 4 times 33 minus 18, which is equal to 132 minus 18, which simplifies to 114. So I've gone ahead and verified that it gives me the same value on both sides of the equation. So we have checked and verified that 33 is in fact the correct answer. Number 5 wants us to solve for a in a squared plus 8 squared is equal to 18 squared. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to subtract 8 squared on both sides. And so we would get a squared is equal to 18 squared minus 8 squared. And then I could take the square root of both sides. So we get a is equal to the square root of 18 squared minus 8 squared. And we can definitely simplify that. So 18 squared minus 8 squared is equal to 260. So this is going to be 260, the square root of 260. And depending on the context, uh, if it wants an exact answer, then we would leave it like that. If it wanted a decimal approximation, which it more likely will want because this is a Pythagorean theorem problem, then I can take the square root of 260 and say that it's approximately 16.12. OK. Number 6 wants us to solve for x. So 2x minus 5x can simplify to negative 3x, which is equal to 4x plus 2x is 6x minus 8. Now I'm going to subtract 6x on both sides. So I get negative 9x is equal to negative 8. And then I want to divide both sides by negative 9. And so we get x is equal to negative 8 divided by negative 9 is just 8 over 9. And so that is our answer for number 6. OK, so for number 7, I'm going to subtract 4z on both sides. And if I do that, we get 4z minus 21 is equal to 47. And then from here, I can add 21 on both sides. And that would give us 4z is equal to 68. And then divide both sides by 4. 
and we get z equals, let's see, how many times does 4 go into 68? 1, 28, 7. So z equals 17. Number 8, I'm going to add alpha plus 3 alpha, so that gives us 4 alpha is equal to negative 4 alpha plus 16. So I would add 4 alpha to both sides. And that's going to give me 8 alpha is equal to 16. And if I divide both sides by 8, that gives me alpha equals 2. And last example, I'm going to subtract 3 beta on both sides. And that will give me 13 equals 2 beta minus 17. And then I can add 17 to both sides. And I get 30 is equal to 2 beta. And then if I divide both sides by 2, that's going to give me beta is equal. 30 divided by 2 is 15. So that will be my final answer for number 9.